Good morning, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to do a quick overview of, of where we are today and then I'll talk about what, uh, what's been added to the system. Today what we've got, you can see on the system, we've got three RTX 3090s. I've added uh, some small CPU coolers, zip tied uh, to the back plates to help cool the, the backside memory. It tends to run a little bit hot. And you can see my output over time. So this is just a screenshot of the dashboard. So this is where I've been. It goes up, it goes down. I'd like to see a little bit more. When I run the pool water, I can crank things up a little bit higher and keep the temperatures down. I do tend to uh, try to baby the, the GPUs a little bit. You can see that in the results, but hopefully if I show this screen again, you'll be able to tell where there's been some improvements. On the topic of babying the GPUs, you can see I've got three of them in the pool heater, two Asus RTX 3090s, one EVGA to an IC3 3090. I think the, RT, the EVGA is picking up the video for this display, so it drops when I log in. It goes back up a little bit. It runs hot though. You can tell the difference in temperatures. The ASUS is running about 44 and 45 at the GPU, uh, while we're at 48 on the EVGA. The memory temperature on the EVGA is at 88 versus 80 and 84. So there is a significant difference in temperature in each one of those systems. I guess it's the quality of the GPU, quality of the memory. There's definitely a distinct difference. I do run the Precision X software for managing the cards, both the ASUS and the EVGA. It seems to be easier than the ASUS software. Card one is, is an ASUS card. I declock that down 150. I think that helps to keep it a little bit cooler. I do run power at about 76%, which is my setting for the ASUS. The EVGA, I've actually turned down a little bit more, so it's running 72% on power, negative 250 on the clock, and the other ASUS is the same, 76 and 150. So even with the settings reduced, that EVGA tends to run hotter than the other two. When there's pool water cooling the system, I can actually get a little more speed out of it and it stays pretty uh, pretty cool. So there's been a few questions about the heat exchanger itself and how that's holding up to chlorine and how it's holding up to the coolant to the uh, CPU and just what it is. I actually got an endoscope. I've got the heat exchanger out, but I wanted to show what it looks like inside now and then do a comparison with how it looks after a few months of operation over the summer. And this is after it's been running pretty much all summer. So looking at the heat exchanger itself, I know this is not great video, apologize for the shakiness. There is a wart in, wart out, water in, and a water out. Um, with the endoscope, we can actually go and take a look inside. I guess the things I noticed, a little bit of residue from, from the water, but stainless still looks pretty good. Not amazingly thick sheet metal that actually makes up the layers of the heat exchanger, but they seem to be in pretty decent shape, so that's water out. I would expect water in to be pretty similar. Um, I do notice some holes at the bottom. My guess is that that, I don't know, there's holes or pitting, so that's something to look at. They don't look like they're corrosion, though. They look like, look, they look like something mechanical to me. But again, something to, something to keep an eye on. Otherwise, everything looks okay. Are they holes or are they just drops? look like dents to me. So, something to keep an eye on. But as of right now, the heat exchanger is not leaking from one, one side to the other. On the wart side, this is the GPU side, I believe. Um, looks like there's some evidence of either rust or some material on the side. Um, some sort of a contamination. Again, something to keep an eye on. And then the other side of that On the wart in, uh, pretty much the same. I don't know if that's rust or some type of contamination. This has been, this has been in the house, um, disconnected and inside the house all winter long. But definitely something we can keep an eye on and see what we see. Um, looks like. Overall, it looks okay to me. I don't think there's anything too terribly wrong with it. We'll keep an eye on the coolant levels. So far, so good. It seems pretty decent, uh, at least last year it did. First, I'll walk you through the picture of the system and how the, the piping uh, flows. And then I'll just show a, a really quick and primitive schematic where the system is right now, how it was hooked up last summer. Today, the loop's fairly simple. There's a pump and reservoir here. Coolant from the pump goes into this side of the manifold here and runs through all three cards. From there, 
coolant goes out into the radiator. From the radiator, it goes into the chiller. And from a chiller, it runs back to the pump. So that's the flow as of today. The idea is that I want to bring as much heat as I can out of the system with a radiator because that's cheaper to run, the, cheaper to operate than the chiller, and then use the chiller to bring the temperature down. I've got the set point at 94, I believe, so I'm not really chilling it down too terribly much, but I'm bringing it down the, enough that the heat doesn't accumulate in the reservoir, which would then grow on itself and, and increase and, and cause um, temperature problems. I like running the chiller. It doesn't cost a terribly large amount of money to run. I think it was $400 on Amazon. I don't see a big hit on the electricity bill. It has no pump. It relies on the cooling loop pump to flow coolant through the chiller. It's got a fairly large reservoir inside of there as well, which provides a heat sink, so there is some decent on and off cycling, so it doesn't uh, run continuously. It can hold a, a lower temperature, but I find the cycles run uh, almost continuously. It'll, it'll run to a set point and turn off for five or 10 seconds, and it's back on again. I do like to keep a higher temperature on here just to keep things at a reasonable level without going too crazy. Right now we've got the pump was here. It goes from the pump into the GPUs. The cards are being fed with a manifold arrangement so you basically have one side that's feeding. The cards are in the middle pressurized manifold on one side and then you've got the outbound side coming off and assuming the cards have a, a fairly similar amount of flow capability, uh, the system kind of self-balances. It seems to work pretty well. The temperature difference I'm seeing on the EVGA card may have something to do with that manifold arrangement. That's how I'm feeding the coolant. It's easier to hook it up that way. The cooling's coming from the pump into the GPUs. The GPUs go into the radiator. The radiator sends heat into the room. From the radiator, it goes to the chiller, which then puts more heat into the room, and then the chiller sends relatively cool coolant back into the reservoir, and it goes around. So that's the loop for what we have today. Last summer, I, I did not have the chiller. The pump on the pool cycles about 12 hours, so it runs 12 hours during the day. At night, turns off, and it gives the pump a chance to rest. It lets the water settle, and it lets all the sediment settle out. So you don't have a continuous run on the pool. thought about having a separate pump just for the cooling loop operating the pool, but then you still have something that's cycling all night long. I like the simplicity of just siphoning the pressurized side of the, of the pump from the pool, which is going to run anyways. It's not added electricity. It's not another system that's uh, going to heat up and, and potentially fail. Very reliable. The pool pump is sized large enough that this is nothing for it to run. And it works. And so two sides of the loop. You have the coolant coming out of the pump going to the GPU, then went through the wall to the outside of my house and into a heat exchanger. The cold water from the pool made it warm and sent the cool water from the heat exchanger into a radiator, which actually provided cool air inside the house, which was nice, and then coolant, which actually was very cool, come back to the reservoir and the pump and start the loop all over again. A couple of people asked why I wasn't pumping either pool water directly through the through the, through the the cards, which would, would be one option, and there's a number of reasons for that, but, but one important thing I did want to bring up is I didn't want to have pool water being pumped from an external source going inside the building. If anything happens, if there's any sort of leak inside the house, the damage is limited to whatever amount of water is in the system and in this reservoir here. If the pool water is being pumped inside the house, there's like 25,000 gallons of water that can be pumped inside the house. The potential for damage there is huge. I just don't want to take that risk. So for that reason, the heat exchanger stays outside. And now that I've got the chiller in the, in the mix, it can be a little more aggressive on how I operate the system. In this system, I, I really tuned it for the temperature I could run when the radiator was the only cooling system. So at night, we would get warm water or a warm cooling loop it would create hot air inside the house fortunately it was less warm air than we were getting cool air as a whole the basement stayed much cooler than when running the, the system on, on air cooled alone I could only tune the system based on whatever temperature differential I can get between the radiator or the cooling loop would heat up pretty significantly so what I'd like to do pump directly from the reservoir into the GPU go from the GPUs through the wall in the house to the heat exchanger cold water coming in warm water going out chilled water going to the radiator first, which
which gives cool air when the pool's running. When the pool's not running, it will create warm air. Let's let the warm air come into the house out of the radiator first, reduce the amount of work that the chiller's got to do. So from the radiator to the chiller, from the chiller back into the reservoir for the pump again. We'll be putting some more data in this to look at the temperature of the pool once I get everything set up. I'm excited to, to play around with this a little bit more and see what we can get out of it. I don't expect to be able to heat the pool up, but if I get a degree or two out of it, it's a degree or two that we didn't have in there before A and B, the basement is significantly cooler cooling. I've got another two video cards, 3090s, in another system that are running air cooled and they tend to heat up the basement as well. So being able to cool the basement off would be a wonderful thing. Um, I think it's it's already turning out to be a pretty good community of, of discussion here, which I like. It's giving me more ideas of things to try and, and you give me the ideas, I'll give them a try. Thank you.